This is a video on how to convert a Dell power supply into a benchtop power supply. We'll begin by taking a part and preparation of your power supply. This power supply is a used power supply. It's from Dell uh, and it's an NPS-250KDA. It's from an e-machine uh, that I've recycled. Uh, here I'm just taking the screws out of the power supply so I can separate the box. Once the screws are out, uh, the box just slides apart. Uh, be careful, some of the wires are can be connected to the box, so if you have a problem with them coming apart, uh, make sure you check to make sure anything isn't still connected. Um, once the power supply is apart, I've noticed that the I couldn't really get to the wires. I'll be removing a lot of wires out of this um, because you don't need quite as many wires um, to make a benchtop power supply. Uh, once I removed um, the board, I decided that I was going to remove the fan. It turns out that I didn't really need to remove the fan. Uh, I was going to mount it to the outside of the box, but decided against that. Uh, being as there was no safety grading. Um, so you do not need to remove the fan. If you decide you need to remove the fan to give you more room for uh, your connections, uh, this is how you do it. So here I am removing the wire ties so I can get to and sort out the wires. Uh, there are quite a few wire ties on the bundle of wires. Um, they do not all need to be removed but it just makes it easier. Uh, here I'm just clipping off all of the connectors uh, so it makes it easier to separate the wires out and make things neater. Um, these are just some of the wires that I disconnected. Now I separate the wires out by color and go online and find out that the colors match different voltages. Yellow matches 12 volt positive, black is a ground, red is 5 volt positive, orange is 3.3 volt positive, blue is 12 volt negative, gray is power supply good, green is power on. We'll be using the green to hook to a switch to turn the power supply on. Purple is 5 volt standby. We'll be using that later to install an LED. Now I use the power supply nameplate to tell me how many amps each voltage draws. In this case, the yellow, which is 12 volts, draws 14 amps. The red draws 22 amps. The orange draws 18 amps. Blue, which is negative 12 volts, carries 1 amp. Purple, around 2 amps and the rest do not have an amp rating. These amp ratings will be very important when we decide how many wires we actually need uh, for our power supply. Next, inspect your wires to find the size. You'll be looking for an AWG rating on the wires. As you can see here, all of the wires are 18 AWG except for the orange wires, which are 60. We'll use this along with the amp ratings to calculate out how many wires we need. We're going to look at the red wire, which was an 18 gauge wire and had to carry 22 amps. Uh, by looking at this chart, our 18 gauge wire can only carry 16 amps when being used in a chassis. So what we do is we look up and down the chart and we find something at or above 22 amps. Just so happens it's a 16 gauge wire. Now we want to go to the column that has conductor square inches and we want to take note of the conductor that we have and the conductor that will carry the right amount of amps. The number of 18 gauge conductors needed is the 16 AWG square inches divided by the 18 AWG square inches. That's going to come out to 1.58 conductors. Now, obviously, we don't have 0.58 conductors, so we're going to round up to 2. Now we'll go back to our chart and compare the AWG to the amperage of the other wires. They are all below the max rating, so all we need is one of each of the other conductors. From our calculations, we could see that we only needed one of the yellow conductors. Uh, so here I'm clipping all but one of the yellow conductors off. In other videos, 
uh, people converting these power supplies, uh, people generally will leave all the wires on and it makes a wiring mess when they're done. Now that I've removed most of the wires, uh, the wiring looks very manageable. Now we must take a look at the ground and calculate out how many we need. So the ground, what we need to do is look at the maximum conductors of any particular color, which is two. And I'm going to need one for the switch, and I'm going to need one just in case I want to add something later. Uh, so I have a total of four ground wires that I need. So here I've removed about 15 ground wires. Now I'm going to partially assemble the power supply. <clears throat> here I'm plugging the fan back in and uh, putting the board back in the chassis. Uh, you want to make sure that you're not pinching any wires and um, nothing is grounding or shorting out. Uh, this process is important. Here I'm putting in just a couple screws into the board to hold it into the chassis. Uh, you want to tighten them snug but not too tight because you can break the board. Here you can see I've stripped back the, co the coating on the wire and I'm going to solder on a connection. Uh, you do not have to solder on connections. You can use crimp connections for this. As you can tell, it would have been impossible to use a crimp connection if we had left all seven yellow conductors on the power supply. When making your solder joint, it's important to make sure the barrel is filled and you've got good flow on the wire and the connector. Here I'm soldering a resistor onto the long leg of an LED that I will be using for a indicator so I know when the power supply is plugged in. Uh, here we're going to solder the LED onto the purple wire which is a 5 volt standby so it's powered whenever the power supply is plugged in. Here I'm showing the switch which is wired to the green wire and the black wire and then the purple wire comes up <coughs> goes through the resistor the LED and back to ground uh, and the rest of the wire deciding on a layout for the switches uh, LEDs and output um, for our power supply always make sure that you look at the power supply to make sure you're going to have enough room for your binding posts and other components uh, as you can see the output binding posts will be in the first locations. That will be the neutral binding post. There will be an LED here that will indicate that it's plugged in. And there will be an LED here to indicate that the switch is on and everything is powered. Uh, in another video I can show you how to make a LED jumper. Um, here's where I'm going to put the off on switch. In this next clip, you can see I've drilled quarter inch holes in my case and installed the binding clips or binding posts in them. Uh, you may need to drill bigger or smaller holes depending on your binding posts. Now I've set my multimeter to continuity or ohms um, to check to see if I have a dead short on any of my binding posts. And here on this last one, you can see that I have um, a short, so I need to fix that. After fixing that and retesting with my voltmeter, uh, I'm starting to install the wires. I'm installing the wires um, in the case, and the order really doesn't matter, but for me, I just went from the highest uh, DC voltage to the lowest DC voltage. After installing all of the wiring, um, I go back and install the switch and the two LEDs. I hold the two LEDs into the case by using some hot glue. Uh, once they're in place. Here you'll see that the switch and LEDs are in place and once again I'm going to check the chassis to make sure that it's not grounded out with a dead short to any of the components. Uh, and here I'm testing from the neutral uh, to the outputs to make sure there is a short um, and that's just showing that everything is hooked up correctly. Before putting the power supply together and screwing the case on, uh, I definitely wanted to check to make sure that everything was okay. Uh, so I'm going to plug the power supply in. Notice that when I plug it in the red LED light comes on to uh, tell me that it is plugged in and when I flip the switch the green LED comes on. With the case open like this be very careful not to touch any of the components inside the uh, power supply. There's some high voltages there. 
Here I'm just checking some of the output voltages to make sure they're good before putting it together. Here you can see I've put the case back on and now I'm testing the switch to make sure that works. And that looks pretty good. Uh, now I'm going to check the output voltages. So we're checking there's 12 volts and 5 volts and 3.3 volts and there's negative 12 volts. And here's something interesting. When you put the, the black tester wire in the negative 12 volt and the positive in the positive 12 volt, you get 24 volt. So when you plug into any two outputs, you always get the delta between the this output voltages. You to get many different so output the delta voltages. between 5.5 volts and 12 volts is 6.5 volts.